at the California Normal Conference on ending the 100-year drug war in California. <laughs> Welcome to Fort Mason. Thanks for showing up. I asked to do this panel, and the Deputy Director of California Normal now really puts me on the front lines. I answer the phone and the emails and people write in for help. And I hear the same questions over and over again, and they're heartbreaking, a lot of them. People losing their jobs, even if they have medical marijuana because they're not protected against drug testing. Uh, mothers losing their children, and fathers too. So even though we have legal medical marijuana, there's still a lot of human rights work to be done. And so this panel will address that with some of the prominent attorneys and uh, wonderful lawmaker who's been on our side. So I think we will start with uh, Michael Levinson and Daisy Brown, who have really been at the forefront of things on the child protective services issue with the aid of Green Aid. And uh, Daisy's really the first mother who stood up and said, I'm, I'm going to fight for my rights. I'm going to, you know, for med I'm going to use medical marijuana and I'm going to keep my child custody. She's just had another incident recently, uh, this week, actually. So this is very timely. Hi there. My name is Michael Levinson. And um, actually, I'm an attorney. I live in L.A. I have an office in L.A., but I really get all over the state as much as I can. Uh, the reason Daisy is sitting next to me is because uh, she's been my client for over a year now. I took her case pro bono a little over a year ago, uh, defended her against some charges in Butte County. Uh, her, they were child endangerment charges, uh, child abuse and endangerment charges, and then cultivation, etc. We defeated the child abuse charges the first time, then they refiled. Uh, almost a year ago. We're still involved in preliminary hearing on that. And then Daisy had a little uh, incident just about a few days ago. Uh, her children were taken again, this time in Tehama County where she had moved to. They tried to put her in jail in Butte County because they said she violated the terms of her release. We had a hearing on that Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. We beat that, so they didn't get to put her in jail that And then Tuesday, she's got a child dependency court matter where they're again uh, going to try to sever, or at least temporarily sent, uh, uh, sever parental rights. Um, and the other reason I think that Daisy should be sitting next to me is because, quite frankly, uh, when it came to the child dependency matter that she had in Butte County, this is over a year ago, her home was raided uh, based on a very kind of shaky search warrant that came as the result of what they called a compliance check. Um, they came to her house, she and her uh, boyfriend, um, you know, were confronted by sheriffs, they unchained her gate, no search warrant, went up to her house, confronted the boyfriend, basically said, you're going to show us around or else. So he showed them around. Uh, they say, everything's fine, hey, no problem, you got some plants, you got, you know, it's all medical, have good luck. She had at this point an infant. Uh, the, had, the, at the first moment, uh, the, the baby had just been born. They say, good luck with the baby. Then, Three weeks later, they show up with a search warrant, and they raid the place, they take her children, they arrest both of them, and probably uh, many of you have heard the audio of her children being taken from her. It is, it is just primarily gut-wrenching, the idea of a child being taken from its mother for basically nothing. Um, it was the same baby in my arms this time. Same, yeah, and, and so they, uh, the, ch the children were taken, and, and by the way, the primary issues revolved around whether dry marijuana or, or grown cut marijuana, not yet heated, not yet decarboxylated, was dangerous to a, to a child. And this is, uh, the evidence was pretty overwhelming that the answer is no, right. But they didn't want to give that up, so they tried a bunch of other things. They tried some lab tests that didn't go anywhere, so we won. 
Where Daisy, I think, actually, I'll be, I'll be straight up honest, where I think Daisy belongs on a panel with lawyers is because Daisy Bram took on the Child Protective Service in Butte County basically on her own. I, I did not, she, basically she was told in some and substance her children have been taken. They were in uh, uh, child protective custody for roughly about three months at this point. They told her, give up the boyfriend, give up the cannabis, do what they tell you. It was basically no. And eventually within, it was only after the prelim, when we, the child charges went away, it was about a month, three weeks. She gives me a call, I got my kids back. I was like, Christmas came early. I mean, it was unbelievable. She got the children back, and she was allowed to use medical cannabis if she wished. Because, and then eventually they closed that case. So basically, we're now in Tehama, Daisy's facing the same set of issues with the Child Protective Court. But the, the, I, I'm telling, I, I can say, and I think the other lawyers here can probably endorse, 99% of attorneys Good attorneys, people that do this, don't win that situation in that way. It's just, it's nearly impossible. Child Protective Court is like Jabberwocky world. And Daisy took them on quietly, calmly, intelligently, with the kind of resolution that it takes to know that you're right, know that you're not going to be told you're wrong just because they say you're wrong. And she stood her ground and she won. And. Uh, and uh, with that, I'm gonna, I, I believe Daisy wants to say a few words and then we'll let the rest of the August panel speak. First, I just want to thank everyone. I've had a number of people come up to me and give me really good hugs. Yeah. And honestly, right now, that's, that's, all that's, that's all that's sustaining me. I need you to tell everybody you know. I need you to think about it and figure out where you can get involved. Because my kids are in foster care right now. No. My kids are in foster care right now. And when I get arraigned in Tehama County, they're going to want to put me in jail. Jamie's up there now with a million dollars bail. They have him in with the child molesters and the worst of the worst. He's in protective custody. So I really, really need you guys not to get all hoopah excited. I get a lot of people that get really, really excited about my story and they want to do something and I never hear another word. So put your money where your mouth is and keep talking about it and figure out how you can help me because my kids need your guys' help and I need your guys' help. Because we got to do something. We need to get legal. If we were legal, my kids wouldn't be in foster care right now. My children would not be in foster care if we had accomplished something. We are the elders of the village. My children need us to do right by them. We need to do well to our children. Thor, Zeus, and Invictus need you guys. They need you badly. Invictus is only three months old and he's on formula. They got him on formula now. I have them carrying around breast pump trying to keep my milk supply up because I'm not with my newborn. Zeus, the one that was 28 days old when I took him the first time, he just happened to have crawled in my arms when they ripped him out again this time. So twice this kid has been ripped out of his mother's arms. Stay strong. Stay strong. Stay safe. Thanks, Daisy.